Clements, and I'm an associate professor of music education at the Pennsylvania State University in State College, Pennsylvania, within the United States. Um, my focus is in teacher training, and I serve as the world music and ethnomusicology expert within the School of Music. I also have a passion for popular musics. Uh, my research focuses on music uh, participation, specifically, why do people do what they do in music and on music transmission? How is music taught and learned in small and large cultures around the world? I like to step off the cliff occasionally into uncharted territories and follow my interests. I've done several studies on musical video games and how they affect children's learning and perspectives on music. I, along with my colleagues Paul Barson and Tom Cody, created the Penn State Eye Ensemble, which is a music course that focuses on um, the use of mobile devices to foster collaboration and creativity in music composition and performance. I'll be speaking very briefly about that class um, at the conference. I have a lot of concerns about the arts in the current world climate. I'm looking forward to this conference as a chance to hear other people's ideas about how e-learning can help elevate some of these concerns, particularly in terms of revolutionizing the way we teach as well as what we teach. Education in the arts is in need of some um, serious overhaul, in my opinion, and e-learning has potential to address these issues. My concerns about the arts include funding, issues of relevancy, and what I perceive as a state of intolerance, fear, and ignorance. I'd like to address each of those very briefly um, as a means for perhaps sparking conversations with all of you at the conference. Funding is a key issue. On a global scale, funding for artistic endeavors is being reduced or outright cut, and I know that I'm speaking to the choir here. Um, but here in the United States, the presumptive Republican nominee for president, um, Mitt Romney, revealed in a recent interview that should he be elected, the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and public broadcasting would be on the chopping block. Uh, these are the heart and soul of public arts funding in this country, and these are really scary times. Um, this brings us to another of my concerns, and that's our relevance. This year's incoming first-year university students were born in 1993 or 1994. The 2016 mindset list, so please go and Google that. Uh, reveals that this new group of students have come to political consciousness during a time of increasing doubts about the future and are entering college bombarded by questions about jobs and the value of a college degree. They have never needed an actual airline ticket or seat, a set of bound encyclopedias. Kurt Cobain, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Richard Nixon, John Wayne Gacy, have all been dead <laughs> um, their entire lives. They are probably the most tribal generation in history and they despise being separated from contact with their similar aged friends. They've always lived in cyberspace, addicted to the next generation of electronic narcotics. Point and shoot cameras are so last millennium. In these students' lives with MP3 players and iPods, they seldom, if ever, listen to the car radio. A quarter of the entering students have suffered some hearing loss. They have always lived in cyberspace. So, what do they have to teach us about how to teach them? My final concern is a big one and far beyond the scope of the simple um, message. Um, and that's intolerance, fear, and ignorance. Um, the arts are powerful. They allow complete human expression of ideas, emotions, and the very essence of what it means to be human. Um, right now in history, I fear that instead of celebrating this, there's an increased sense of skepticism and fear. In many parts of the world, creativity is seen as the enemy, and the, quote, fall in line attitude is persuasive if not required. While we can all think of global issues of intolerance and fear, let me quickly list some rather silly issues of ignorance from my own region. In March of 2012, Susan Mortison, 20, a 29-year-old mom from Richmond, 
Virginia, here in the U.S., um, was arrested for allowing her four-year-old daughter to draw on rocks at a local park with sideway, sidewalk chalk. She received 50 hours of community service and helped to strip and repaint 200 boundary posts on a bridge. Mortensen told a local TV station that her daughter is, quote, now very nervous around cops and, quote, very scared of chalk. In Doylestown, Pennsylvania, police cited two teenagers for decorating a street with chalk renditions of a whale and a sea turtle. The kids must now appear in court and pay a fine to be determined by a district judge. Doylestown police chief told a local newspaper that the chalking was a, quote, attempt at vandalism, ending quote, that could lead to more permanent materials. All of this, I know, is some big issues, some scary issues for the arts, but I do have hope for the arts, um, what they've meant to my life and the life of my students. Um, there's no question to that. But as you watch this video, this is Charles at 16 months who lives to move his body, to draw on paper, and to chant and make rhythms of words. Um, and this is my hope for the future. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in London and take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.